All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. Do I do that? I call the meeting to order right at, I guess it's 601 at this point. City Clerk. We do roll call. Mayor Doby. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Nafolda. Here. Council Member Hasselbrink. Here. Council Member Hibbard. Here. Council Member Murphy. Here. All right, if everybody would stand up with me, we're going to do our Pledge of Allegiance, and Council Member Hasselbrink will run that for us, and after that, please remain standing for our invocation, which will be performed by our Council Member Hibbert. All right, if you could join me as we honor our flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, thank you for this great nation that we have the honor and privilege to live in. I ask you for wisdom, guidance, guide this meeting tonight. Pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, we've got some presentations. So if. No. Okay. He's not here. Oh. Okay. So run it later. Um. They may be just running a little bit late. If they show up later, we'll signal you. But. Okay. We don't want the shoes to go in vain. <laughs> All righty. So th is a. Uh, I'll let him know. Benjamin, then, or he's not here either? Uh, Benjamin is <laughs> here to mm -hmm. present to Sergeant Lee, and Sergeant Lee's not here, so. Oh, the Benjamin was for. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All righty. So item five is a. Uh, <laughs> gonna wait a moment. We will be alerted when the situation shifts. So we will move to six, oral communications. At this time, any individual in the audience may come forward to speak on any item within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. Remarks are to be limited to not more than five minutes per speaker. Do we have any speakers? Come on down. Oh, can we, are we supposed to? Let me see where the podium's gonna be, Fran. Okay. And let me remind us that if you speak, please fill out either a speaker card or do we have the yes, it's right. podium or my list? I'm sorry. Let me know if you want it afterwards. Oh, if you can just sign the list that's right there. That's... Okay. okay. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the rain as much as I am. I'm excited for my flowers to bloom this month, hopefully. So question for you guys. Today, I understand on the agenda, they have the item to rezone. I'd like to see if we can get that pulled from this meeting and do it next meeting. Am I correct with that? Oh, you can't hear me? <laughs> I'd like to see if we can get the item to be moved to next month to rezone, voting on rezoning. And I'll tell you why. Okay. So I just want to see, is it still on the agenda for today? That item is. Okay, perfect, okay. So the reason I'm here is I just happened to be looking at the website reading at 11 o'clock at night and saw you guys were having this meeting. I was surprised because as you can tell, not very many people even knew about this. So the public is concerned and we appreciate that I think they would like to know too and be able to kind of get some input and just kind of have some questions that are ongoing and kind of concerned about the lack of transparency. I'm finding out that there's a lot of, well kind of with that, let me just back up. I find it like in my own opinion, you know, as a resident with the projects with the potential of various, various ones and the different ones they have and the numbers of them, and that it seems like the builders, developers are having more information given to them than we, the residents, are, and we live here in the community. And I have proof of that in that I have a list of emails that were sent between Tom Oliver and Les Johnson that dated back to 2019 and have continued for a couple years before the public was even made aware of that West End building being sold. 
And in that time, it's like the cart is going leading before the horse, and that Les Johnson is kind of directing what's to be done. Let's try to rezone it to a three, and other things. It's kind of concerning, it's like, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but I think this is valid information, and I gave it to this gal here who's given it to the city council clerk, hopefully. In addition, I have a few other letters from Chet to the Cox Cas Castle Nicholson Company about the low, about the high density, and also about the rezoning. The concern is, I'm not sure who's leading this. Is it the planning department? Or is it your developer that's telling you what to do? At the same time, we're getting emails or have come across emails in which signs were put up to stop the Lamson project. And Les Johnson reaches out directly to Tom Oliver and mentions, or I should say Tom reaches out to Les and mentions that your sign is on the Lamson project property. Would you like us to take it down? And of course, Les, for sure, please, if you could do that, we appreciate it. And then they reach out to a Javier that works for the city to go take it down. So there's questions as to what's going on behind the scenes and why are the residents not being notified of this? In addition, aside from these text messages from 2019 to current, it's very concerning in that you got um, Tom asking about the affordability of the unit's expectations going you know, with less. There's a lot of interesting text. I think all of the council members, if I could encourage you to please read these before any vote. It's very concerning. Um, there's some key issues here that you should be made aware of before a vote can technically, legally, really be fairly made. And in addition, what our concern is as residents, what we're asking is a healthy protective situation with the air and noise to be taken into consideration. We agree that there's a need for housing, but we'd like it to be scaled to our neighborhoods, not where it's way over dense. And at the same time to consider the parking, the parking is definitely under, under numbered for the situation. So on that note, if again, if I can encourage you to take a look at the text or the emails, take a look at these letters back and forth from, it looks like the developer's attorney. There's a lot of hidden information in here that the public was never made aware of. We'd like to be part of it. We need to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Do we have any other, um, come on down. Hello, I'm Christine Arfwetson, and I know you've seen me before. And so, yes, I've read all the texts back and forth with Les Johnson, former, I guess, city planner manager, and Tom Oliver two years back. And Tom Oliver said to the Sun reporter, I believe August or September of 2022, we didn't know a thing about this. It just fell in our lap. Okay, I guess anybody can make a mistake, but like uh, Helen just said, the lack of transparency is obvious. Information is power. You guys have all the information. We have to have Freedom of Information Act to get information. And it is the whole setup with no information going back and forth is infuriating. I want to compliment you, Madam Mayor, last week, and also the city manager for explaining things to us and what you tried to do to make the, call it, the project more acceptable to the state. And we appreciate that. And, and that matters in Mr. Noda's presentation about the actual numbers. It matters. I guess at this point, we would really like to have a forum, like we said last time, where we can ask you questions and feel better about what actually can be done. We expect the developer to 
put in adequate parking, if that means reducing the density, then it does. You can't have 1.1 parking spaces for the number of residents when you have a three bedroom place. It's just not, uh, it's not coherent at all with what the actual transportation around our city and areas are. Also, something must be done about the entrance and exit from the project. It has to be. You cannot set up constant U-turns. You just can't. And when I tried to talk to Mr. Johnson about this at the heirs meeting, he wouldn't even talk to me about it. Talk to the developers and they're overwhelmed with people. It, it's not just not transparent, it's, you can't get answers. And I feel like if you care about your constituents, I'm assuming all of you are public servants, whether you're hired by the city or you're elected by the residents, you care. And the kind of things you hear, Ms. Hasselbrink, last time you were so upset about innuendos about you or your sons or whatever, that shouldn't happen. But when you have no rumor control, these are the kind of things that happen. And Ms. Hibbard said, public servants right now are under attack. We don't want to attack you. We just want to understand what's going on. And you're voting on things that we feel like we don't even have all the answers to. If we could just get adequate parking and safe entrance and exit from this project, it would go a long way to making everybody happy. And I too agree that my son is a teacher. He would be in the very low affordable housing. I know. I taught for 24 years. I know what teachers make. I'm all for police, fire, poli uh, teachers, everybody being in our community. We want them to be able to live here. You shouldn't have to be, quote, rich to live here. So. Is there a way we can ever know what a pressure can be applied to the developers, Mr. City Manager, Mr. Lovely Ron Noda? <laughs> I know we're not supposed to answer anything, but you're not on the council. Do you think pressure can be applied so actually to the I developers? Can, if you're done talking, I can answer you. Okay, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I'm a baby. There well, you I'm, go. I've moved up in the world. So um, one thing you said, do you have to trust the developer? No. But you should be able to trust us. And we work very hard and valiantly to make sure that as much transparency as is possible, feasible, is available. Like our meetings do not change. Third Monday, every month, 6 o'clock, we are in this very tiny building. So. You don't got to go and look when we'll be here. The only time we change it is if a holiday is on Monday. <coughs> now, to your second point, who do you put pressure on? Uh, you Please come and talk to us and tell us what your grievances are. <coughs> but it is a mandate that comes from much higher up than us. So the pressure would be applied up higher. But please know, I've been squeezing everywhere I can. I've gone as high up as I can just to be told no. So as it comes back down to us, all that we can do is offer a form for y'all to come and engage with us. I love that you come and tell us like, okay, U-turns, and I see him making notes and making sure that it's safe for travel and parking. Now, personally, I live in what they call apartment row. I hate the name, but that's where I live. You think when people bring projects and it's, oh, we got 1.1 parking spots. Baby, what's a 1.1 car? So there are things, we have the same issues because we're right. residents before we're elected. So my issues are your issues. We're not just gonna ignore them, we're gonna fight to the degree that we can, but hopefully we get to a place where when we do have to vote and it looks contrary, you'll understand, I know them and I know she fought, like she is from Long Beach, because that's where I'm from, and I do. But there's only so much that that can get done when the gloves are bigger than yours. I understand and I appreciate that. 
Do you got anything that you want to add? Just one thing, Madam Mayor. Um, I was going to encourage you to, if you don't mind, to stick around for <clears throat> my section for the city manager comments, because I think you'll hear some things that will actually be encouraging with regards to oh. our attempts to go above and beyond where we have gone in terms or, of yeah, notification. Okay. We, Mr. Noda, last time you were very patient in explaining. This is something, I mean, you explain, but sometimes you barely get a thread on it of understanding that we put it in the housing element, you voted for that, and I understood what you were saying. If you don't put it in, then you have less power. Can, do you have meetings then with the developers and, and then say, here, we put it in the element and now here's what we want from you and all that? See, that's the thing when your ordinary people here that are not in the know of what you have, we can come and give you our concerns, but I don't want to give you a concern on a rumor. I want to give you a concern on what actually is making sense now that is happening. And I don't <clears throat> think, and I'll, we'll be glad to stay, Good. but I think that's the problem is, and you know, I'm just one person from Parkwood and, and all. And then you hear, like Helen just said, signs are being removed. Well, that's not encouraging, is it? It's like, well, is your council working against you? I don't think so. I don't believe that. I believe that you're all, you're not getting paid a cent worth your time. <laughs> uh, no, you're not. I know, you don't make enough. Listen, I worked 47 years as a nurse. I know what it is to have a whole lot of responsibility and you don't get paid commensurate with that. And I believe your goodwill and your good hearts and your public servants working for us. And I know there's things we don't even understand and know that you're having to deal with. Thank you. So thanks for your time. And I appreciate all of you doing the jobs you're doing. Thank thanks. you. Now, I will say this for those that are not present, and then I'm going to let you ask your questions. I personally, when any resident sends me any communication, email, letter, whatever, I immediately forward it to our city staff. And then I follow up with them to make sure that an answer is given. So feel free to do that with mm -hmm. any of us. It doesn't just have to be your district rep. It can be any of us up here because we all represent all of our two square miles. Send us your questions, send us your comments, send us whatever, but don't get frustrated if you send the mayor an email and you don't hear back from me because I can almost guarantee you that someone will get back to you with the answer that you're looking for, okay? Can almost promise, but you know, check with me first because I might have to follow up with somebody. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, Council Member Hasselberg. I just have a couple clarification questions to the city manager while the topic's at hand. Yes, um, has there been an official application from any developer regarding any project on Lampson? We do not have a complete application from any developer with regards to Lampson property, no. So there's nothing to talk about at this moment. There's rumors, but there's nothing to talk about. There's rumors, and we have had discussions and meetings with the development team with regards to what their intentions are. They, right. I know that they have produced preliminary, sorry, preliminary plans. I know that those are constantly in flux, um, but we have not received anything that staff would be able to analyze as a submitted project, which then would go to the Planning Commission and then to this body for a decision. And then at that point, that's when we discuss in and out of the community. That's when we discuss parking. Now, parking, keep in mind, a couple years ago, we were state mandated because we have very high parking standards. The state doesn't allow us to have those anymore. It's 1.1, where we used to be able to do it by the number of bedrooms in a home. We can no longer do that because the state doesn't allow us to do that anymore. So the process is once that application is submitted, now we can start talking. The town hall meetings that were done at the Ayers Hotel were not done by the city, correct? That is correct. Okay, so they were just floating out their idea of a non-existent project. That's why we're not able to talk about it because it doesn't exist right now. They're still waiting for the EIR, and once that happens, believe you me, we're gonna go through this with the fine tooth comb because as the mayor said, we're residents here also. So I just wanna clear that up. Um, the thing we're voting on tonight for 10B, that's actually a second reading of something we voted on last month, correct? That is correct. And because it's an ordinance, we have to do two readings and two votes. That is correct. Okay, thank you, that's it. Can I just ask, will you um, consider the uh, 
But there were 200 last month, and it's a timing thing. This is not Lampson. This is the RENA allocation that if we don't approve it, the state takes over. So, friend, if you're going to ask a question, and I will allow it, which is me listening. This is us listening. Because once you sit down and your five minutes are up, that should be it. But we're listening. But I need you to come and talk into the mic because this will need to be transcribed later. So is it a question or you want to give us another point? No, it's a question. Okay. The question is, can you seriously put that one on hold, that item on hold? For rezoning. Nobody knew about what was on today's agenda till late at night. If it's held off a month, it's not going to hurt you. There's not going to be any government threatening you over a month. That's all I ask for the citizens. Since you guys live here, you know <laughs> where I'm asking. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Um, are question. there? Yes. Um, so council member Hasselbrink asked if there were any official applications. Uh, tell me what sort of unofficial applications we've received from the developer. Anything outside of the scope of official, what are we in possession of? We have some preliminary plans that they submitted. So can you describe what we do have regarding the Lampson project? It's a booklet of renderings as to what exactly they might want to develop there at the site. Um, actually, I think we have two sets at this point. And so um, essentially it has car counts where they would put different buildings, those kind of things. But um, we're unable to analyze it until it's an official submittal that has, this is actually what we want to do. So I think at this point they're essentially, much like they did with their presentation at the Aries uh, property at the hotel, is putting different ideas out before to just kind of say, this is what our thinking is at the moment. So we have received some things from the developer. Do we, I'm not sure our technical capabilities, but do we have the ability to, to broadcast what we do have? Put a picture It's up available or? on our website. Okay, and where would someone find that if they're, if they're watching online right now? I believe that it's actually under the Development Services tab, and there is actually a, a tab that says Lampson Project. Okay, thank you. I believe it's been on there since last April. I'd have to check on the exact date, but it has been up for quite yeah. some time. Did anybody else have a question? I, I actually have a question. Uh, the, the first speaker, you had mentioned you had provided the city clerk with some text messages or, or emails. Is, um, is there a way that, we, that I can see that or read those? She, so she uh, provided one copy only. I can pass it up if you guys would like to look at it now, but it will be provided to you after the meeting. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to. Um, okay. How? Let me ask you a question. How? So, the, so there's text messages, and this was from a FOIA request. Email. Is it email? It was. It was produced in response to a public records act request. A pe okay. And who, uh, who here at the city processes those? That is done in conjunction with the city attorney's office and the city clerk's office. When requests come in, we look, uh, work with staff to locate responsive documents to the requests that come in and then distribute the records. So is, uh, have you, are you familiar with the content of these text messages and emails? Yeah. Okay, and as, as well as the city clerk? I believe so, I won't speak for her. Okay, and I don't know if I'll have time to look over these bef before, you know, we proceed tonight, but from what you've seen, do you see any conflicts of interest or potential conflicts of interest uh, in, what's, in what's in here? I do not. You don't, okay. I do not. So Fran, I gotta ask that once we're seated, cause uh, we do need to move on a little bit, okay? So did you have any additional questions, Council Member Hibbert? Um, I, I would love to be able to read these. I'm, you know, this is my third month on council, so this pre predates my time here. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see this, particularly because they're text messages. So what devices oh. were these? They're emails. The emails, not text messages. The, the only thing I would offer, j just as an additional admonishment on this, is that though the PRA request itself and the text messages themselves relate specifically to the Lampson project, which is not 
an item before the city council tonight on the agenda for consideration. So, um, you know, we're happy to answer brief questions that you may have, but I'm hesitant to go into a full blown discussion of the content of those text messages or the relationship to the Lanson project and its potential entitlements uh, simply because it hasn't been agendized as a discussion item tonight. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I'm trying to be quiet. I appreciate that because we're going to need to move on. Uh, Council any, Member Hibbert, you any of the content in, in, in here, is it related to uh, item 10B? The, the request was specific as to uh, the Lampson project site and the Arrowhead project site within the context of the general plan housing element update. Item 10B, uh, the housing element update was approved by resolution at our last meeting. Uh, there's no item on the agenda related to the entitlements for the Lampson project or anything related to the Arrowhead project. Uh, 10B relates to the second reading of an ordinance that was approved after a public hearing at the last meeting, uh, which is a citywide legislative rezoning action. So, uh, so just there's a clear. tangential relation uh, because oh, the Lampson project- Can you, can you project expa expound on that tangential ten <laughs> relationship for me. The, the Lampson what's, what's project in site is included in, in uh, a host of other properties that are being rezoned in connection with the general plan housing element. Uh, but it's not a, a project or site specific approval that's on the agenda this evening. So nothing in these email addresses have anything to do with 10B, directly or indirectly? In indirectly in the sense that Lampson is involved in the larger rezoning, but it's none of the correspondence is specific to that action um, in terms of the legislative action that the city council took at the last meeting. So that's, so possibly there, there's some, something here. To, to the extent the citywide the zoning effort or the legislative rezoning applies citywide so to the extent the property is located within the city it applies to 10b uh, but it's not a specific correspondence within the file you're looking at do not relate specifically to the rezoning per se they're related to uh, the developers efforts in large part to bring forward entitlements for the lamps and site <coughs> Did that answer your question? Is, uh, is this FOIA request publicly available? Like uh, when, when there's a request for information, is this information here, then you know, right here, who has access to this particular, this particular information? That, that's a public record that would be made available to anyone who requests it. So it's been distributed out to the requester. Anyone else who is seeking to obtain that information can obtain those records. And in your legal perspective, you don't see any conflicts of interest between the content of this and rezoning item 10B. I, I do not. You good, council member? I actually have a follow-up question now. Um, when the information was made available, um, in your legal opinion, you do not believe that the council should have been made a, aware of the situation before making the decision last month on the housing element? I know about it. We know about it because mm -hmm. I got a record request as well. Mm -hmm. So how did you receive? It was an email request from the city clerk to surrender certain so, correspondence. Yeah, so that part, part of the initial step is depending on the scope of the request, we'll, staff will reach out to individuals who may have records in their possession that are responsive to that request. So an email went out uh, to the city council seeing if anyone had records. Um, typically, when public records acts requests are processed, the city council is not generally advised. It's something uh, that the clerk's office handles fairly routinely on a range of issues where folks are looking for documentation or records related to any numbers of issues and that's something that typically doesn't get elevated up to the level of city council in terms of uh, something you're made aware of okay and do you know the date of the email that you received me yeah off the top of my head yeah no <laughs> I could check later <laughs> you said it was last month right no it was well before that 
I don't know. Do you remember when you sent it? I believe we got that request. It was several months ago. Yeah. It took a while to process the records that were relevant and to produce them. So most likely myself or council member Hibbard would have been privy to that if it was a few months ago. I would have to look up the date to be certain. Okay. Who is, uh, so this particular packet is phone numbers. These are text messages. Who is Les Johnson? Yeah, I, Les Johnson was a former community development director with the city. He has since moved on to work for a private entity who is uh, processing the Lampson site. Um, I, I, along with Chet, would be happy to answer any questions you have related to that. But again, I caution that we're delving very deeply into a discussion that was not listed on this evening's agenda. So what I hear you saying is move on. Got it. Mm. Friend, so we're going to move on now. I think that we have extended plenty of grace during this discussion, and if you don't feel it, I apologize that you don't feel it, but I absolutely sent it to you. So we are going to uh, close oral communications unless there was someone else present that has not taken their five minutes. You want to come on up for your five minutes by all means. Otherwise, I'm going to close them, and we're going to move on to council announcements. Was there anyone else? No. Nope. Well, all right. So we'll move on to council <coughs> announcements, <coughs> item seven. Uh, we'll start with you, Council Member Murphy. What are your announcements? Sure. Hello, everyone. Um, so I attended several events. I believe that it's always um, great to take the initiative to attend events, uh, meet with people, because you, like I always think, you gain a little bit of knowledge each time you meet with someone new or you attend an event. Um, so last month, I attended the Black History Lunch Future Leaders. I attended the OC Tax Luncheon. Um, I also attended the Epson Open House event, which I suggest anyone who has not been in that building that they go by. It is truly amazing. It is what they've done with it is truly, truly, and it's everything is sustainable, which is great for the future. Um, I also attended a chamber breakfast featuring guest speakers Mike Daniel and Manal Riches, which is from my alma mater, Cal State Fullerton. Um, they provided, I'm going to read because I'm much better when I read about stuff. They provided uh, significant information regarding programs, training, growth planning, startup assistance, marketing strategies, access to app capital, and other relevant resources and opportunities available to small business owners and aspiring entrepreneurs at no cost. I wasn't aware of this. I wish this information was more out there because it is truly phenomenal for you know small business owners to learn that you can receive all these services at no cost, including how to access capital to start your business. Um, addition to that, I was able to present um, Wahoo's Fish Tacos, our good old Wahoo Fish Tacos, with a certificate of recognition. I attended the every 15 minute assembly at La Salle High School, which if you have not seen that, it is truly emotional and impactful, the way that the students get involved and the teachers and families um, involved with a drunk driver. It's truly something to watch. Um, I also attended the Americana Awards where we celebrated our very own Nisi Stewart. Um, she's been an amazing community member here. Um, I'm also, oh, I also attended the Cybersecurity for Government Leaders webinar, which I learned a tremendous amount of steps that we can take to protect ourselves, not just government leaders, just community members when it comes to um, scammers. Um, in fact, I would love for us to take more initiatives to go ahead and get involved and find out what we can do for our community in regards to protecting ourselves for cybersecurity. I also attended an informational get to know um, department heads from the city um, staff. And finally, I attended the retirement event honoring our very own Sergeant Chris Lee. So that is it. Um, oh, yes. In regards to community outreach, I would like to make a motion um, that we do have town hall meetings that we can address the community more directly. Um, maybe every month we can have a district um, and have those community members 
come face to face and meet with council members of that district or other staff members so that they can actually communicate with each of us and they can get their questions maybe answered if not via telecom or zoom so that we can make sure that we provide as much transparency as the community is looking for thank you all right council member hibbert um did she make a motion i did i made a motion to put it on the agenda so we can start having town hall meetings <laughs> All right, point of order. So for uh, council announcements, we can't officially take action. If you would like to have one member second your request, then we can bring a future item forward for further council discussion. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. And the motion is for to add um, workshops? So it's not a yeah. motion. She's oh, just looking for support for, for um, to bring back an item to discuss possible community meetings. I'd support that. That's all. Okay. Now, Council Member Hibbert. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, March 8th and 15th, I attended OC sanitation meetings, and I've learned more than I probably ever thought I would want to. Uh, for example, it takes three hours for what the sanitation to ca calls solids from your toilet to make its way to their district in Fountain Valley that was interesting uh, I asked them if I can climb down into a manhole and walk the sewers and after the guys laughed they said no but that they would let me observe while they test the sewage for disease so I'll be taking them up on that uh, the low Sal City Library continues to be closed it's closed for improvement so it'll probably be closed for the rest of the year so uh, stay updated on that and on Friday, I had the opportunity to be a judge for the Weekend of <coughs> Art. Emmeline and her team and everyone um, over at Parks and Rec did a great job. I judged the preschool through fifth grade. So it was a tough competition, but had a great time. It was well attended, it was a beautiful event. So congratulations on that. And that is what I was up to. And I wanted to, I received an email that I'd like to, uh, that I'd like to read from a, I'd like, just like to read. Um, give me just one second to get that out. Uh, excuse me, before that, I'd like, to I'd like to thank the resident who sent me an email last night at about 10 p.m. Um, identifying an er a $10 million error in our financial report, so thank you for that. The letter I'm going to read, I'm going to read because I take it seriously. Taxpayer money is used to pay our city employees and it's important to provide our employees with a good workplace. My goal with reading this is to do what's best for the employee. And if any city employees would like to meet with me, please send me an email. This is the letter. Hello, I'm writing this letter to bring your attention to internal issues with the city of Los Alamitos. Numerous employees have expressed concerns to upper management throughout the years with no success. It's unfortunate that a city employee has to write a letter to city council anonymously about issues in the workplace. This alone should tell you about the conditions in which make us feel uncomfortable about where we work. Ron Noda, Director of Development Services, is under investigation for workplace violations. Front office staff, recreation staff, and public works staff were interviewed by Human Resources, Chelsea Wilson, and gave statements. The findings outcome of which were never discussed since. Veteran Department Secretary Maria and CISO departure. Maria expressed interest in a management analyst role with the city of Los Alamitos. The position opened up, she applied, and the spot was never filled. She eventually applied for a management analyst role in a neighboring city and was offered a job shortly after submitting her two-week notice to the city of Los Alamitos. The city opened back up the same <coughs> position she once interviewed for. In her words, it was a total slap in the face. She gave almost eight years of dedicated service to the city of Los Alamitos. 
the city of Los Alamitos has let her down. In September, entire payroll team quit due to leadership issues. The department is, sh is still short staffed. Employees are held to different standards when it comes to attendance. Upper management, city hall number one and city hall number two staff are allowed to come and go as they please. While other departments held to higher standards when it comes to showing up for, to work and leaving on time. It's blatantly obvious to everyone when parking lots and offices empty are empty when employees are supposed to be working. Director of Development Ron Noda and Public Works Foreman Anthony Vasquez aren't on speaking terms. They had a falling out due to leadership issues. Ultimately, the foreman turned down the supervisor role after serving two years as acting interim public works supervisor. Renee Carmody Carmody was recently hired as the public works supervisor from a pool of outside applicants. He has had problems with multiple employees and upper management. Police, uh, excuse me, public works staff were interviewed by Human Resources, Chelsea Wilson, and gave statements regarding the ongoing problems and concerns. Nothing has been discussed since. The City of Los Alamitos hired an interim public works superintendent, Marlene Miyoshi. Miyoshi? She is a contract employee through Wilden Engineering Group. She only works two days out of the week, Monday and Wednesday. Marlene departed on March 15th and Lori Hemp, Hemp, Hempy, Wilden Engineering Group has taken her place. We question the overall effectiveness of this position. Tenured employees and quality outside applicants should be considered for positions within the city of Los Alamitos. It has become a common hiring practice, excuse me, it has become a common practice now of hiring quote unquote friends with little to no experience in the positions they are appointed. The city of Los Alamitos uses, used to recognize, honor, acknowledge major milestones in employee careers, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 25 years, etc. It has been brought to our attention through HR Chelsea Wilson that this will no longer continue. I ask you to please look into these matters. Meet with these departments in private, allowing each employee to feel comfortable opening up without fear of retaliation. City Council is more than welcome in every department in this city. You should not feel otherwise. We all work for the people of the city of Los Alamitos. It's unfortunate to see people lose sight of that. <coughs> Thank you, and it's signed, the hardworking, dedicated men of women of the city of Los Alamitos. And I wanted to read this letter. I, again, I'm you know the newest one on council. I can't speak to its validity, but I would like to start I would like to start a conversation, so I wanted to be sure to, to read that. Thank you. So before we move on, is there any particular way that, uh, or anything, attorney, that, I know how those things are handled in a corporate setting mm -hmm. with uh, allegations and HR specifically, but I'm not in that setting, so <coughs> is there anything that so, needs to be said? So Madam Mayor, I, to, no, and I appreciate that. Um, so typically personnel matters are discussed in closed session, those that relate to employees that are under the council's direct purview. Mm -hmm. um, obviously the issues that are being raised in, in that letter are uh, management issues that pertain to the management of staff from city manager on down through directors to supervisors, managers, and so forth. Um, those fall directly under my purview with regards to how exactly they're handled and how they're adjudicated. So. Um, Obviously, I'm more than happy to have a conversation about uh, myself as manager, but uh, the employees report to me, not to the city council. Okay. Council Member Hasselbrink. All right. Um, attended the Miracon Awards, uh, honoring Nisi Stewart, which was great as always. Uh, La Salle was well represented. I think we had four to five tables and we were voted the um, best sharing section in the event um, two years in a row now so that was always good uh, attended a foundation meeting we finalized the fireworks stands logistics uh, we'll have one over at the Vaughn Center um, and we'll have one at the uh, DeVita old played against sports on Catala Noel 
Uh, those will be open from July 1st to July 4th. And um, residents will be getting a mailer from TNT um, about that in the next couple of months or so. <clears throat> I attended the art festival. Um, as always, it's a class event down to a heart player to get us all in the mood and really good snacks. Um, some of this talent is, I was doing the junior high level and these kids are just amazing. So it was, it was neat to see that and it grows every year. Um, I also attended the high school drama department presentation of Freaky Friday. Um, I know we're known for our athletics and our academics, but our performing arts, our model United Nations, our robotics are also nationally known. Um, and this was just a great, uh, they did just a great job. Um, it's completely student run from the direction to the sets, to the costumes, everything. Um, there's one faculty in charge just because she has to be an adult, but everything else is run by the students. Uh, budget and Finance Committee, we met. We went over the mid-year budget review, which is on our, our agenda for tonight. Um, everything is looking good in our city. Um, OCFA, uh, we had our first open house at the training grounds, the first one in three years um, due to COVID. Um, and they pulled out all the stops. They had all the equipment there and stuff for kids and everything. It was really cool. Uh, we are finally finishing negotiations with three of our four unions. Hopefully that's gonna come. We have a meeting on Thursday and that should come to um, a conclusion, hopefully. And then we have one more union that we're starting negotiations with. Um, we did have our mid-year budget adjustment. We had, because of property taxes, an increased revenue of $24 million with an increased expense of 12 million, so in our favor. And our pension is now 94.7% paid off, um, which is good. We have a snowball plan, so any, um, our policy is any extra, any surplus from the budget. 50% um, of it goes towards CIP projects, the other 50% goes towards the pension pay down. And so we should be paid off projected now, we should have that paid off in three years, which is very, very good. Um, <clears throat> I did not go to Tritaw's open house, but I have met with him and Janet Wynn just to kind of see what they've been doing. Um, they have both um, sent letters to the PUC regarding the gas rates. Um, we are the only state where the gas rates are going up. Every other state, the gas rates are going down. Um, so that's top on the agenda for them. <clears throat> Tree's also introduced a couple of um, legislative bills that are in committee, which is a good thing. Um, he wants to, um, he's trying to look after small businesses. Small businesses have an $800 a year fee that they have to pay in lieu of uh, taxes and stuff, and he's trying to get it passed for small businesses with under a profitability of $20,000 a year. That fee gets waived. <clears throat> $800 is a lot to a company that profits $20,000. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're also, him and Janet together are, um, have legislation that the state starts an infant formula stockpile program. So we don't have the problem that we did last mm -hmm. time. So um, they're working hard for us. They're easy to um, get a hold of and they'll listen. They know our city very, very well. And so I just appreciate the um, <clears throat> ongoing representation. Um, regarding the, the personnel issue that was highlighted, um, I find it very troubling that we're bringing up employees' names in a public forum without it being fully vetted. Um, I got that email this afternoon. Um, I just want to be really careful that we understand our role, that we are the policy makers. We have two direct hires, our city manager and our city attorney. Everything else falls under the city manager. And I am very, very nervous about calling out staff people's names, especially since we haven't vetted any of this. So um, just be careful that's it thank you mayor pro tem nafolda i just wanted to add that uh i attended the <clears throat> districts uh, it was the all districts uh, musical concert where both the uh junior highs and the high school get together and the various bands uh you know play music and I think there's a concert in the evening. So it's just nice to see that the talented kids that we have in the community, anytime you get a chance to go to one of those events or any type of event, you know, outside of sports. And it just reminds you of, you know, uh, what's out there. Our future is looking pretty bright and it's, uh, we got some really talented kids here, so. Thank you. All right, well, uh, 
I'm just tell y'all, I go to a lot of meetings lately. I'm very popular. Everybody sends me invites. But I will make these as quick as possible. I did bring back a talking point. We asked our Mosquito Invectors Committee to give us talking points so we could quickly let our residents know. And this one is, as the rain and cool weather continues, many residential properties will have standing water around their homes. Y'all are encouraged to dump and drain. They call it Operation Tip and Toss. So you tip it and you toss it. Tip and toss the water. Because although mosquito breeding is slowed by cooler weather, mosquitoes are still active in our communities. And the mosquitoes can live in your house. I think that I've told y'all this, but in case you haven't heard my spiel, they can live, their the eggs lay dormant for literally, they're gremlins, literal years, and then they can reactivate off a drop of water. They are worse than roaches. And they're the ankle biters and you think it's a swarm. No, it's one mosquito that just keeps biting you, and they're all females. Do with that information what you will. We already do. Show you right. Um, I also attended the Weekend of Art. Uh, I was sharing that I, I feel woefully uh, underqualified to try to judge some of the masterpieces that are present. If you don't get to come out to the Weekend of Art, it's such a beautiful production from the preschoolers on up to full grown adults. The level of artistry, it, it literally makes me feel bad that they're like, Tonya, judge it. I'm like, no, somebody else stick a ribbon because who am I? I visited, uh, I went to Rep uh, Representative Steele's Mayor's Roundtable. Now, each of our electeds, like we have a pipeline of electeds, we have Michelle Steele is our Congresswoman, we have Janet Nguyen, she's our Senator, we have Tree Ta, he's our Assemblyman, and then we have Supervisor Doe, Andrew Doe, he is our Assembly person. I've been making it a point, and uh, both NOTAs, Emmeline and Ron, have allowed me to go with them as they kind of put our city on the map with these different electeds because they get so much money, they get so many resources, they've got this slew of staff that have information that we do not. And between those two, they are able to show us where the treasures are so that we can bring them home. So one thing that uh, we were talking about with Representative Steele is she shared one of her priorities are like senior citizens, and I'm working on some stuff for our, our seasoned folks because we've got a, a pretty large community of them, and I'm not gonna say yet, but y'all are gonna love it. That I can promise you. I went to the open house. I did go to the open house for Assemblyman Tree Ta, and that was really great because he's very accessible. <clears throat> All of our electeds are very accessible. We have phenomenal relationships with each of our elected officials. I went to the Magical Americana Awards. It is a beautiful night and the cause is extraordinary. I realize that the ticket can be a bit substantial, but if you hear some of the stories from the young people that are impacted by the monies that they raise, one girl, I had to give her a hug before I left. Her story was just, I'm not gonna repeat it right now, but it was so profound. I was like, come here, let me give you a mama hug. You just need a mama hug. And there's so many stories like that. It, it really is a beautiful cause. I also went to, um, and again, Miss Emily Noda accompanied me to the OC Women's and Leadership Summit. That was pretty cool. I met one-on-one, -on -one, again, with the Notas, with uh, Representative Steele's staff, and that was more of a very pointed conversation, like, hey, what you got in your bag and how can I get it? And they just let us know, here's what we have access to, here's the grants, here's the monies, here's the protocol, here's the procedures, here are the timelines, here's whatever. And we are out there gathering all of that information and letting them know that although we're small, LaSalle wants what's theirs. So just know that we in all the rooms asking for all of the things. I also went to the every 15 minute assembly at the high school and I was actually chatting with the highway patrol officer that is in charge of it. He runs it, it's through a grant. And I was asking him what next layer could be added because we all know that our young people, their frontal lobes are underdeveloped. <laughs> so some stuff, it hits them for like 15 minutes. And then they're like, eh, what happened? Where was I earlier? So it's like, where's the next layer? What's the follow-up? How do you engage the parents deeper so that it's not just a, they see it, they're traumatized, and then they forget about it. But how do you make it a continued learning? So I've got some more questions out for him. He's gonna be giving me some more information. And then I uh, also met one-on-one -on -one with Supervisor Doe's staff. And um, because we went out again, Ron and Emmeline, I'm like their sidekick. They just let me go everywhere that they go to try to get stuff done. They gave us some iPads. Well, they promised to give us some iPads for our seniors. 
so that they can do continued learning over in our community center. And I don't know that we would have even known about it if we hadn't showed up and asked what patted their pockets down. We had to go and pat their pockets down. And we found some iPads in those pockets. I went to a ribbon cutting for a new dental office bespoke. It's over by the hospital. And then I also attended the open house for Epson. It is a spectacular venue. Um, you do have to be on the list. Like, I do not advise you just show up talking about, council told us to come over here. No, they need to. <laughs> you have to do a, a preview, or they got to check you in. You fill out some paper, give them a little blood sample, you know, small things. And then I also attended the retirement event for Sergeant Chris Lee, who, he's still not here? Retired. He's retired. <laughs> he retired. I guess he's like, listen, I ain't showing up for y'all no more. <laughs> and that, that's it for this month. Thank you for your patience as we work through that. Um, next would be item eight, items from our city manager. City manager, do you have any comments? I do have a couple, Madam Mayor, if you'll allow me. Absolutely. Uh, the first would be that uh, I'll be polling 10E, the annual comprehensive financial report. Um, as was mentioned earlier, there was a typo within that report. Um, and thank you to the concerned citizen that pointed that out to us. Um, obviously that changes, uh, one million to 10 million is a big change. And we have a uh, track record here of winning awards from GFOA uh, for those reports. And we'd like to keep that record intact. Okay. Um, just as a further step to ensure that uh, we're taking every advantage of putting every set of eyeballs on these reports. I also plan on taking this report back to the Budget Standing Committee before it will return back to the City Council. Um, I have found that in the past that that has been a great forum for us to work out uh, the bugs and different issues prior to presenting them to the City Council. So that'll be my mode of operation going forward. Okay. Um, one thing that I did want to mention, and this is the item that uh, we were talking about earlier, I think the mayor and the council have made it very clear um, with regards to their desire to ensure that the public knows that we are listening, uh, that these meetings are not for a show, and that um, just like uh, you have comments, we f do find that it's our job to try to get answers to those comments. And so one of the things that we have been working internally about is this idea of project notification and how exactly we let the public know once there is a project. And what we've come up with is a package of new standards that we'd like to bring to the city council at the next council meeting. And essentially what it is, is it takes projects of a certain size or a certain type and expands what we normally would do by code in order to inform the public. This would include social media posts, a place for it to reside with on the website, a signage at the site itself that has renderings of the actual project that's going to be developed, and then also expanding out the circle from where we actually do the notifications from so that we can incorporate more people into that uh, that will hopefully know about the project before it takes place. Um, this again is something that I think will hopefully help with that transparency, allow for us to actually get out a little bit further out of our uh, comfort zone, I guess, in terms of making sure that we're talking to everyone. But I think probably more importantly, uh, while we currently are above the state standard, um, I like the idea that we have the best standard. And so that is a, a package that will be brought to the city council for consideration like at your next meeting. Will there be a QR code? So I'm sorry, yes, adding additional technology to those signs so that when people walk by, it's not a, well, go look up at this, yes. at this website, it's yes. take a picture, okay, now we have the ability to directly yes. link to where it is. Uh, the city clerk and I are fond that we, of saying that we are slowly getting into the 20th century, so this will be our jump right into the 21st, so uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to implement some technology to help us along with this. I love it. And for those like unfamiliar or afraid of a QR code, if you can use your camera, you can use a QR code. It's just open your camera, take a picture, click the link, boom, everything you want to know. Next, I just have a couple of housekeeping issues. Um, as Councilmember Murphy mentioned, um, we have been working and it was brought to our attention by the new council members that uh, the city really does not have a, f a formal onboarding process with regards to new council members. There's a significant amount of information that each of you has to digest on a daily basis, not to mention state and local codes, but also just municipal operations. Um, thank you to the two of you for taking the time to come in and meet with city staff to be able to get a feel for what exactly those programs look like. 
um, we're looking to actually formalize that process with a list of documents that'll be provided and then also to really kind of get down into the nuts and bolts of what we're providing to each council member so that everybody starts from an even playing field right out of the gate and so um, that also will be an item that will come forward to you at, at a future council meeting for your approval uh, next I'd like to talk a little bit about the branding efforts this again will be an item that comes to you at the next council meeting uh, the city has a mishmash of different branding that it's used throughout the years. Um, as we go down the road of doing neighborhood um, identification, um, it would be nice to have a similar brand that we actually can apply and put together and actually push out to the world. Um, this gets to the whole idea of trying to put Los Alamitos on the map. Uh, we first have to define ourselves so that we know what we are talking about. Um, well, I plan to bring an item back to the council to ask you to appoint a, uh, a branding uh, subcommittee that will be able to work with staff in order to actually develop this at the end of the day. Uh, next, and it was brought up earlier actually, so this is fortuitous. Um, in addition to the project planning, um, I've also been talking to a number of council members with regards to the needs for additional town hall meetings. Um, as you all are aware, we do two town hall meetings a year at this point um, uh, that was started by Ron Noda back um, about a year and a half ago uh, called Good Morning Los Al. Mm -hmm. Like the idea of taking that and that format for anybody who doesn't know is actually an opportunity for members of the community, business owners, residents, uh, just interested parties to come to a room we hold it in our community center and basically we bring everybody so it's uh, Tom Oliver from planning, it's our friends from uh, building safety, it's our police officers, it's our uh, city clerk, our finance team, our community development team. And the idea is to put as many people in a room that can answer questions as directly as possible um, without having to go through the rigmarole of, well, I made a comment at a council meeting or I sent an email, we can have a conversation and I find that one question usually gets to another question, usually gets to another question. Um, and it's just better to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with our residents. And luckily we're a small enough town that we have that ability. Um, basically I'd like to bring an item to you to expand that a little bit. Uh, some of the items that we've also been talking about is rotating uh, through different districts and having the, that district council member maybe do live stream with questions being answered in real time uh, for those that actually could not attend the, the town halls. So this is a package of, I guess, communication tools that I would like to see if I can bring to the city council and have you all agree to uh, whether or not it's something that we want to do. So um, this will be in line with uh, the councilwoman's idea of uh, having this at the next council meeting. So we should have really some meat to discuss. So then lastly uh one thing that i did want to mention um i brought it with us just because i thought it was pertinent tonight um we obviously have great employees here and i think it's important that we do recognize them and so uh, one of the things that we have been working on is an employee wellness plan but also how exactly we recognize our employees going forward and so one of the things that we do now, uh, and I'll have to give a lot of credit to uh, Chelsea Wilson for putting this together, is a box, a welcome box essentially that goes to each new employee that has a message from the city council welcoming them to the city. Uh, it has a t-shirt, a water bottle, and a couple other small Los Al things, just kind of a welcome to the team. We also will be giving that out to our current employees as well, just because uh, just because it's uh, it's kind of the AT and T commercial, you know, <laughs> new and existing should uh, be treated <laughs> the same. So, I think that's an important kind of step. And then one thing that we have been working on as well is really kind of trying to recognize those that are doing phenomenal work. Uh, this is the prototype uh, BCE belt. <laughs> Love it. It's got a grip on it. <laughs> So uh, BCE is another brainchild of uh, Ron Noda. It stands for best city ever. And so the idea is to essentially recognize employees as they accomplish great milestones within the work that they do here. Um, I actually, just today we were standing around looking at it, we realized we need to add a little plaque where we can etch their names into the side of it so that they'll be memorialized forever. Um, these are just some of the things that I think that uh, we're going to be undertaking here in the next year and then Chelsea has a slew of others that will be rolling out that I think uh, will give our us an opportunity as a 
as a city, as a city council, to recognize the great work that our employees are doing. <laughs> I had one. Um, <laughs> put it on. First of all, I yeah, want to make sure. <laughs> does the employee have to wear that for any given yes. time? You yeah. know what? I, as a hazing, I, I think yeah. that that would be appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would yeah. say if it's an employee of the month, they got month. it's a birthday month, it's uh, a recognition yes. month. For I, I think that would be <coughs> yeah. perfect. True. But on a more serious note, on the planning initiatives that you said to make that more available to people, mm -hmm. is there a way, and I know specifically with any development at Lampson, it affects Los Al residents yes. a small little bit, Parkwood, yes. but it really affects College Park East. Yes. And that's really where we're getting the bulk of the comments from. Is there a way we could kindly ask our neighbor, um, not necessarily to put it on their website, because I don't think most residents go to city websites because they're really boring, but if they could put it on their social media that this is what's happening mm -hmm. across the street or something like that just to be able to point them in the right direction because i don't you know i don't subscribe to the local steel beach neighborhood watch but maybe the city could get something out so they would be aware of it because um, otherwise i don't know how else to do to get out that word to other re residents in other cities Yes, ma'am, and this is something that we've discussed at the staff level with Seal Beach. Um, and without getting into too much detail, I believe that they're open to it. But again, this it's a it's an ongoing conversation. But right, exactly. Yes. I mean, it's basically just taking our post and forwarding it to their constituents. I think that would clear up a lot of things. Yes. Um, like I say, I think the website nobody looks at websites. It's hard to find. I mean, they just don't. But they look at you know, Instagram and social media. And I know Seal Beach is very active in social media. Their police department is one of the best pages ever because they're full of snarkiness and sarcasm and it's beautiful. <laughs> so I know they're very active in that part of it. So if we could ask them to do that, that would be awesome. The chief is coming out of his chair, but uh, yes, I, Ooh, I, 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 I agree. <laughs> oh. You have awakened the competition, so. <laughs> Well, just to add on to that, that's another reason that I've been feverishly going to every meeting that they invite me to is because us mayors are also collaborating. So that is also something that as it's something that's happening in Cyprus, I know the mayor in Cyprus. I made her my friend. Y'all know I like to collect friends. I know the mayor in Seal Beach, so I made them my friends. So between what the city manager is doing mm -hmm. and then what the mayor is doing, that is exactly why we're making these connections so that we can get more information out. Now, for your, your belt, small suggestion, Yes, ma right? Make it a little plate, but that it gets exchanged out and put that gets put on a bigger stand because you might run out of room. Your belt ain't that big. <laughs> sure. I mean, it is big, but it ain't that big. Um, did you have anything? I just have two more real quickly for you, Go Mayor. For so um, also the next step in our uh, budget preparation and ideas will be a goal setting for the city council uh, a facilitated goal setting uh, we'll be reaching out to each of you in order to try to find a day where you are all available so that we can have a facilitated conversation about what exactly uh, some of our goals are or more aptly what the council's goals are uh, independent of the budget preparation cycle uh, this will help inform us as to some of the ideas that maybe we include in the, in the budget or that might be standalone items going forward. And then lastly, um, and this does tie directly, Mayor, to what you were talking about with regards to making sure that Los Al gets what is due to them. Um, I was informed late last week that uh, the city did oh, win a grant of 350000 for Labrador Park. Hey! <laughs> we clap for that! So again, uh, my hat's off to Ron and uh, Tom Oliver for all the work that they did in order to put that together. Uh, and with that, Mayor, I would actually like to ask uh, Director Noda if she wouldn't mind uh, telling us a little bit about some upcoming events. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and members of the City Council. City of Los Alamitos would like to invite the community to the Memorial Care Miller Children's and Women's Hospital Long Beach Spring Carnival over at Little Cottonwood Park on Saturday, April 8th from 9.30 to noon. The carnival will feature the popular egg hunts, arts and crafts, a photo area with Peter Rabbit, carnival game booths, bounce houses, vendor booths, and activities for the whole family to participate in. The egg the event will feature four egg hunt areas, ages 0 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, 9 to 12, and the first hunt starting at 10 a.m. And for the adults, we will also have the beer garden available. 
by the foundation. With no beer. Um, with no beer, but other In the morning? other beverages Lebe. to enjoy, along with yeah. the food, food vendors present. And um, we also have our Southland Credit Union Elevate Teen Expo coming up April 22nd. This is for middle and high school students. Um, the event entry is only $5, but we do have scholarships available. And that's really just to get the teens to commit to coming. Um, but it was a very popular last year, and we really want to spread the word because it was super impactful for those that were present at the event. Thank you. Thank you. That is it, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, dokie. Uh, next we have warrants, the attached warrants. I need a motion. I will move it. Second. I'll second it. Roll call. Oh, <laughs> okay. Give it to council member. <laughs> I was saying I second, but you can second, because I'm a giver. Oh. Roll call, please. <laughs> Mayor Doby. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Nafolda. Yes. Council member Hasselbrink. Yes. Council Member Hibbert? Yes. <coughs> Council Member Murphy? Yes. Passes. Great. Okay, so we're going to move on to the consent calendar. Um, all consent calendar items may be acted upon by one motion unless a council member requests separate action on a specific item. Would anyone like to pull any item except 10E, which was already pulled by our illustrious city manager? Any other items to be pulled? I'd like to pull 10B. Okay. If I can just get a staff report and just expand on that a little bit. All righty. Anybody else? Anything else? I'll move the balance. I will second the balance. And can we, if we can. All in favor? All in favor for the balance. Aye. 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 Okay. Was that, was that five eyes? Okay. Yes. So we have pulled 10 B for staff report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm going to ask the city attorney just to uh, run down the, the reasoning why this is this is done this way. Okay. Sure. So uh, 10B pertains to a, a rezoning ordinance that was introduced for first reading at the council's last meeting. Uh, follow a, following a public hearing, the council did go ahead and vote by a majority to approve that ordinance. Uh, procedurally, what's required for the enactment of an ordinance is the introduction for first reading and that's where we typically will have a public hearing where testimony from the public's provided the council deliberates on the item before them and then takes a vote which has been done uh, but again procedurally it's required that an ordinance comes back for a second reading uh, at the next regular meeting of city council for one final vote uh, and then it will become effective 30 days thereafter so uh, that's the reason it's presented on the consent calendar, which is our typical approach with uh, moving ordinances through the city council. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, so I'll move item 10B. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Y'all gotta be quick. Okay. And we need a roll call. All, All in favor. favor. Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Next, we have this discussion items, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we've got item A, volunteers and policing program. Can I get a staff report on that there? Yes, ma'am. I believe that uh, the chief or the chief will be handling this. Yes. One. Oh, hang on. I'm just waiting for the PowerPoint to come up. No. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, the photo behind us, we're uh, pr uh, proposing a volunteers and policing program, um, the also known as a VIP program, is a program that allows community members to offer their time and talents to the police department. And surrounding agencies have been using and utilizing volunteers for years. And to give you some local examples, uh, the Cypress Police Department has 10 volunteers and the Seal Beach Police Department has approximately 50, which might uh, sound converse to what you might expect being that Cypress is larger and Seal Beach is smaller. However, volunteers allow us to uh, bolster our staff, meaning that Cypress PD 
has a larger staff being it is a larger city so there's not much of a need for volunteers there mm. where smaller cities like seal beach and as we are proposing us are in greater need for volunteers uh, because of our small size of our staff okay. uh, participants will play a key role in enhancing the police mission by assisting with things such as clerical duties which would be filing shredding ordering supplies inventory and pd lobby reception uh, special events such as National Night Out, Fireworks Spectacular, Spring <coughs> Carnival, Halloween, uh, Winter Wonderland, etc. Uh, vacation checks, uh, residential checks for residents that are out of town, and other duties uh, such as car washes, errands, uniform center, print shop, pickups. And these f civilian positions will not be placed in unsecure scenes and will not be carrying weapons. Um, People have to apply for the position through our, it says here how to become a volunteer, uh, apply for the position through Civic HR. They will have to pass an oral exam, submit to a criminal background investigation, demonstrate a desire to serve the public, and applicants must be 18 at the time of appointment. Um, and additionally, here in um, Los Alamitos, we're gonna require that they uh, become a member of West County CERT uh, within one year of appointment. Uh, the commitment from the PD to the VIP is to provide training and support, provide guidance and feedback on their performance, to respect the skills, needs, and dignity of the volunteer, and treat the volunteer as an equal coworker, jointly responsible for completing the mission of the police department. Uh, in addition to routine duties, um, they will also have training for EOC, Emergency Oper Operations Center Support Staff, and Emergency Shelter Support and logistical field support as needed. Um, the VIP's commitment to the police department is to perform the assigned duties of the position, adhere to the uh, VIP program rules, policies, and procedures, uh, fulfill the minimum requirement of the program, which is ensuring they're wearing the authorized uniforms, volunteering at least eight hours a month in two four-hour shifts or one eight-hour shift, uh, but the volunteers can assist up to 20 hours a week. Um, let's see, the, uh, the goal is to have the first shift start in uh, July 1st, although we will start with an application process, which will begin April 15th. And we actually have somebody here today, um, if you would please stand. Uh, she is demonstrating what the <laughs> volunteer in policing uniform would look like. Um, and. Does the council have it? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that collection. Yes. It would be new to us to have this particular uniform. So okay. this is what it would look like should Great. we implement the program. And does the council have any questions? I love the program. I know Seal Beach is real popular, especially among the retirees. Yes, and we they also have a vehicle that they have assigned to them. And if you remember the beginning of this, we had a black and white on there. We have plans, should the program be implemented, to have a vehicle be used. It would not be black and white, it would be white, and we'll come up with a separate logo specifically for volunteers so people would know that it's not a police officer. Um, could it be expanded where it could be also a segue for interested community members or anyone to who wants to be a police officer in the future? Um, there is no restriction, so they just have to be 18. Um, anyone that starts in that program could definitely transition from then once they're 20 and a half to be able to apply uh, to become a police officer, yes. You mentioned the minimum age of 18. Do we have a maximum age? We do not. Okay. Nope, no maximum age. We will start small though with a small handful of volunteers in, in a first wave to transition them into uh, the PD should it be approved. Uh, and then expand the program as necessary. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. um, will there be ongoing drug testing and other testing that will be done? I'm just asking because my kids just had a drug test, so it just made me think about it. Uh, that would be an HR question for you to answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking drug, tw drug testing for this particular program? Correct. Yeah. So I guess that would be just the initial drug testing, but we haven't gotten into a consistent drug testing throughout the, throughout the process. Okay. 
So could you say like random, so you reserve the right to drug test if you feel like? <laughs> yeah, I guess that would be a, a legal question. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you do all the employees randomly, yeah. you can't. And, oh no, can't I, I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. just, well they're, they're not employees, they're volunteers. Correct. So. So we're gonna beat them up harder. So they would not belong mm -hmm. to any of the bargaining groups. Correct. Because they're volunteers. Mm -hmm. Similar to part-time employees or at-will employees. I'm, I'm just <clears> playing <throat> with you. I say an all-white vehicle with some stickers on it so you don't freak people out. Mm -hmm. well, that's just my suggestion. <laughs> Mary, can I make one comment, if I, if I can, please? Mm -hmm. uh, just because she's here and I think it's important to point her out, is uh, Anna's actually one of, probably one of our more dedicated um, CERT members, whenever there is something in town that has to be done, um, I would be stunned not to see her there uh, when we open up the EOC, whenever we have things that actually need uh, those helping hands, she's always there. And so it does not surprise me at all that she's uh, the number one recruit for this, uh, for this position. So I just wanted to recognize her because obviously she does a lot. And every single time that there's an emergency or there's an event, I turn around and I feel like I see her. So, uh, so thank you. <coughs> Yeah, she's now a model. Well, thank you <laughs> for Nordstrom's. Office. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Any All other right. questions? Mm -mm. No, nope, good. Okay. okay. Um, boo -boo 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 -boo. If there's any, is there anyone in the public who would like to ask a question? No. No. There's no. Oh, we no, also <laughs> <laughs> just my few friends still here. Okay. <clears throat> so I just need a motion and a second. I'll move it. I'll I'll second. Hey, that's uh, what I'm talking about. Quick on the draw. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, perfect time to be quick on the draw, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next is um, item B, the mid-year. No, no, we pulled B. No, this is a discussion mm -hmm. item. Mid-year general fund budget review and financial update for the fiscal year 22-23. Uh, can I get a staff report on 11B, please? Yes, ma'am, and I'm going to turn this over to uh, Craig, our finance director, to uh, handle. I did just want to mention briefly that the uh, city continues to track on pace with our budget and um, actually is doing um, considerably be better. So, But I'll let Craig get into the details. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council. Uh, tonight I'll be presenting the mid-year budget review for fiscal year 22-23. Uh, again, this reflects the re recorded information for the first six months through 12-31-22. Uh, this inf report was presented to the Budget Standing Committee at the Mar March 8th special meeting, and tonight's report is the same information that was in presented to the Budget Standing Committee. So a little bit of background overview um, on, the on the economy. The economy... Um, obviously shows really good signs, positive signs of recovery from the reports we have received from HDL that shows positive growth. Um, uh, other economic uh, um, economists have you know, also indicated that there's, you know, there's a def definite upswing in the economy. Uh, however, there's some cautionary things still at play. Um, obviously, the inflation is still inflated. Um, it's still a factor. Global unrest continues. Um, the the, un the Factors from this are un, uh, really unknown, but it could cause additional interruptions to, to the supply chain. Uh, the U.S. Treasury has been driving the interest um, rate changes, trying to control the inflation. And they have three goals that they've been trying to attend to. One is that's obviously to control inflation and then avo avoid a, a real slowdown. And then they're <coughs> targeting what they call a soft landing. So it's going to be somewhere between a, a full economic downturn and a you know, just a slight deterrent. Turn. We haven't seen any evidence of that um, through the end of the fiscal year or, or the end of the calendar year. Uh, we had built into our budget uh, a factor that we were, you know, initially told that there was going to be a slowdown, but that's yet to be seen. So the last report we received from HDL that was dated uh, February 15th, that was for three, third quarter 22. And that showed positive growth at 13.3%. Um, and that was compared to the county, which is only 8.4 percent, and the state of less than that at 8 percent. So the city's doing very, very well. Uh, they also provide revised estimates for fiscal year 23, and that shows the year end of 
fiscal year in June 30th will be at up 3.8%. Uh, there's programmed flattening for moving out into fiscal year 23-24, but uh, we'll, we'll uh, program that in we'll, uh, when we uh, prepare the new budget. This midyear report, again, this is a snapshot in time, reflects recorded information through December 31st, 22, and also it's a projection of where we think fiscal year 23 will be at June 30th. This slide is a <coughs> overview of the comparison of adopted budget for actual revenues um, through 1231 and a projection through 2223. And the far right column is a variance. Our budgeted revenues were 20.1 million. Uh, through December 31st, we're about 8.7 million. And that's on track uh, historically where we usually are at December 31. Uh, we're projecting 22-23 will come in a little higher at 21.5 million. Uh, may, there's main reasons for that. The projection for sales tax and measure why local tax are going to be much higher. And then there's some other variances for lower utility tax, uh, license, uh, license well, fines and forfeitures, and then um, uh, use utility use tax. And I'll discuss those in the next slides. The uh, property sales and use tax, and Measure Y, local sales tax, that comprise over 70% of the revenue that's generated and collected by the city. The largest variances are, again, from the previous slide, will be in sales tax, Measure Y, fines and forfeitures. Sales tax, it's much better than anticipated revenues. The economy hasn't been reflective of the slowdown as predicted and but that we budgeted for. Measure why certain categories are greater than 150% of the Bradley Burns rate, and in particular that's in autos and transportation and consumer goods. Um, that's the main of those items are online purchases. And when we did the original projections and built the Measure Y, uh, we used 150%. But HDL has a revised percentage that we'll be using going forward, at least for the time being, and that's at 163.8%, and that's on a conservative basis. The uh, utility user tax is one of the items that is trending down, um, and that's basically historically. Uh, there's less revenue that's anticipated with a change in consumer consumption. Um, this is just typical of, of how consumers are spending and it was what we're seeing, and so I'll be making these adjustments going forward uh, when I build out the new budget. Uh, also, a category that was down is fines and forfeitures. Uh, this is largely due to lo lower red ca light camera fines. Uh, it's basically the um, construction that's been uh, done by OCTA on, on surface streets. And uh, staff will be assessing that uh, to find out what the total financial impact will be uh, when we come to fiscal year in uh, 23. Next slide is a uh, depiction of the expenditures, comparison again of adopted budget for 22-23, actual through December 31st. Um, and the projection for where we end up on 22-23, and of course the right-hand columns of variance. We adopted total expenditures of 19.1 million. We're actual of 9.5 million through 12.31, and projecting out at 19 point, about 19.4 million for 22-23, a little bit over 225,000 over uh, the adopted budget. And I'll explain the uh, variances as, go, as we go forward. <coughs> So, as the city manager mentioned, the overall expenditures uh, tracking with the budget. Uh, there's, there's some exceptions. Police, development services, recreation are would have the largest variances. Uh, police is projected to be about $260,000 in savings. Uh, it represents about 3.2%. And this is due to budgeted vacant positions in patrol, um, mainly. And then SRO position, school resource officer, reflects about half a year, six months savings. That position wasn't filled, I think, until November. So we have some savings projected there. For development services, it's projected to be about $371,000 higher, about 8.4%. This is mainly due to unexpected facility building project the repairs that have to be done. Um, the largest one of that is the roof repair for the recreation mm -hmm. building. Uh, also, an anticipated purchases for the PD remodeling that we've come across. Um, a, lot of, a lot of that is due to asbestos and the removal of that. 
In addition, recreation is projected to be about $195,000 or higher, and this is mainly due to higher part-time salaries with increased program cost. Mainly, we're plugging back in aquatics program, other programs for seniors, the fitness and events. And the large item part of that is a $75,000 rental uh, for LASD, USD facilities. That was a three-year catch-up, and that was a billing, and going forward, I think, we're projecting about $20,000 um, a year to use those facilities, but that'll be programmed in the new budget. Uh, the additional appropriations that are being requested have already been plugged in. Uh, we will need some direction for the city council's budget, however. Uh, there's some additional travel and related expenditures that needs to be determined uh, due to uh, larger travels that expenditures by council members that we traditionally haven't planned for. Uh, finance, part-time savings, uh, part-time staffing of about $14,000. I need additional staffing there. Please, additional supplies, about 76000 that's spread across all their divisions. Uh, development services, as expected, as I um, mentioned, unexpected facility building projects, uh, that's 371000 And then recreation, higher part-time costs, and increase in programs, and the uh, LASD facility rental, $195,000 more. I did want to make a comment, Craig, before you move on to the next slide. Yes, sir. The 371000 within the development services budget, those are project costs. They're not operational costs. Um, and so going forward, when we develop this next budget, um, those costs will be pulled out of the operational budget and put into CIPs so that uh, the council will have a very clear tracking of this money went to this project as opposed to it being put into a operational budget where it's obviously harder to be able to track where exactly the money went at the end of the day. Also, there's some additional staffing changes that have been necessitated by department realignments. Uh, two of these is in, one of them is in recreation. An additional recreation manager is needed to support uh, the program expansion. And then in police, additional officers being requested for overhire, and this will be um, covered by grants, grant, grant offset for this position. This next slide is a summary of the additional appropriations request, and this is before the additional staffing or additional CIP or any other uh, expenditure election. Uh, City Council, that, as I mentioned, we need some direction on that, additional costs that, for travel. Uh, finance, $14,307. Police, $76,536. Development service, $370,833. Recreation, $195,367. And non-departmental, $10,000. Total of $667,043 for additional appropriations. So with that, um, the recommendation is to review the mid-year general fund budget for fiscal year 22-23 and projection for fiscal year in June 30-23 and then provide additional direction. With that, I look forward to your questions. Council, I did want to just make one more comment with regards to the travel budget. Um, for many years, we left that at a significantly low number uh, ever since my arrival here, simply because that's when COVID started and so no one's been able to travel. And so obviously taking that back up to a reasonable number now obviously is, is why we're bringing it back before you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions? many council members does the uh, does the 10 10 million dollar error typo that was in the agenda packet impact this report at all no it doesn't so the report that you're referring to that was pulled uh, that was the end of year so it's the essentially showing where we ended up last year with regards to expenses over revenue. Um, I'm happy to report that we ended up the year with, and Craig, please correct me if I'm wrong, we were four million and... That's correct, 4.2 oh, 4. 4. 4. million. 4.2 million over um, what our projections were. Uh, that was a combination of uh, savings over a million dollars in savings in operational costs and then uh, better than expected performance with regards to the uh, sales tax uh, first year that we've actually had an entire year of accounting for that number so uh, obviously that is good news especially considering the, uh, the next item on the agenda are there any additional questions 
up here. All right. Um, can I get a motion and a second? I will make a motion. To do what? To moot the for the for the mid-year mid item B, 11B, the mid-year general fund budget review and update. Uh, Madam Mayor, if the council is not making any additional direction to staff, then it's, you can receive and file the report. So I'm glad ain't nobody here to see me just reading my little green lines. <laughs> so just come move along. All righty. Um, C, the community center roof repair. And a staff report on that. Yes, ma'am, and I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Noda if there's particular questions with regards to um, the need for this, what has actually happened. There is a rather large hole in the community center um, roof at this moment. Um, it needs to be repaired. Um, the reason this item is coming before you is largely because of the way that our city charter is structured. Um, the city attorney, the city clerk, and myself are examining different ways to ensure that we have the ability to go out and make repairs when we need to. Um, obviously, if something's an emergency, by its very nature, it needs to be done quickly. And sometimes we don't have a council meeting uh, for many weeks in order for us to come together. So we'll be looking at ways to um, be able to speed up this process. But essentially, um, we have to come to the city council in order to get the authority in order to go back and make an emergency repair. Um, Ms. Noda has contacted um, qualified individuals who do this work. They are currently looking at the site. Um, the one thing that I will note, and if uh, again, if we'd like to get into more detail, is that until we open up the ceiling and see what is actually in there, um, that cost could go up. This is why the staff is requesting the 500000 in order to uh, start this work. And hopefully, um, by the time we get done with it, you will have a brand new roof. So. Okay. All righty. <coughs> I just have a quick question. With the hole in the roof, does that limit us on our being able to do classes and Luckily, and I'll ask uh, Director Noda if she wouldn't mind chiming in, but the, where the hole is currently is within the back kitchen area, so it's away from where we hold events. Um, so as you know, Weekend of Art was able to go forward. However, uh, not having access to that kitchen and the fact that it's, uh, there's a number of flat areas along the roof um, there, um, we're concerned that there could be other areas that might give way as time goes on, especially as we're about to experience another rain event uh, this week. So um, at the moment, no. However, we are having our staff, our, our building safety staff, go in and check and make sure that everything is okay in order so that we can continue to put people in the building. Well, I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Do we have limited ability of a full functioning single community center in our city? Yes. Thank you. All righty. So I got my staff report. Did anybody else have any uh, other questions? I have some questions. Okay. Uh, do we know what year the staff, the roof was installed? The original building was 1960. No, the the, the community center was originally built in 1970, early 70s, 70, 72, I believe. There's a back portion of the roof that was redone in 2018. Is the rest of the roof from the 70s? I believe so. Mm. Any more questions or, or points of clarity? Do we have insurance on that building? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'm glad you asked. Yes, we do. <laughs> Oftentimes, if a roof is 30 years plus, they don't insure the building, so, okay. All righty. So, now is it a motion and a second? Because <laughs> that's what my green works. Now we're doing something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I get a motion now? I will make my own motion. Um, can I get a second? Second. Glorious. Can I get a roll call? Mayor Doby? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Nafolda? Yes. Councilmember Hasselbrink? Yes. Councilmember Hibbard? Enthusiastically. 
Yes. 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 Oh. Okay. And Council Member Murphy. Yes. Thank you. All right, Panther crowd. Looks like next up is closed session. Yes. Quick. All right. Session. Thank you. Quick closed session. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. The City Council will now adjourn into closed session to discuss item 12A as listed on this evening's agenda. I'm missing my bond topic. I, uh, where's the email? The email's in the text. session with no reportable action taken. And the city council meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>